All right. Well, welcome to the Sunfire Culinary Institute. We here are sharing this with you. One of our lessons that is very critical that we share with our students when they come here to the Sunfire Academy. And as we share this information at the Sunfire Academy, I hope it clarifies a lot of the questions that I see have been buzzing around about this group things here <laughs> of the foods that I would say would comprise some of the ingredients in our pantry aside from the fresh foods. You know, the sun-fired cuisine is pretty much anchored in fresh is best. This is our philosophy. So fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, fresh herbs, you know, things that are spoilable. The pantry generally contains things that are not spoilable that quickly. So your dried ingredients, mostly your nuts, seeds, grains, and beans, aside from our seaweeds, which is another big part of the sun-fired culinary uh, pantry. Sea vegetables, these are greens, or, well, they're not green down in the sea because they haven't been exposed to that much light, but many of them that grow close to the uh, surface of the, of the sea the green, which you call algae or seaweeds and things of that nature. So, to bring this to you, to share this with you, it's a very important lesson. So what we generally do with these foods that are, come to us in a dry state or in a dormant state, because at some point these foods were fresh. <laughs> you know, some of them have been left in the field to just uh, dry out on their own. Some have been harvested and put to dry uh, through some other uh, means of time. Mostly it's all about time and exposure to heat. So the nuts are a great source of protein for a sun-fired live food uh, eating system. Nuts and seeds, and we talk, when we're talking seeds, we're talking about seeds that contain protein. Overall, generally, these are all seeds. <laughs> you know, anything that you can plant that is going to create another plant, you know, sprout out of itself. You know, this is these are all seeds. But the ones within the umbrella of that subgrouping that are called seeds, which we compare that to nuts. The nuts are generally Seeds that don't have some form of edible portion, addition to the seed. Whether it's a fruit, a bark, you know, uh, say something like nutmeg. Nutmeg is a seed, but it has that pulp of fruit that forms around it. And that part we call the mace, mace, M-A-C-E. Then you have something like the cacao. The cacao is a seed, but it does also have a fruiting pulp. That little white, you know, fruity, soft, you know, delicacy. So that's why they call seeds in terms of the difference between a seed and a nut. So like a walnut. Walnut does not have a fruit pulp or any other part of it that can be consumed, you know, other than the nut itself, the pecan, the hazelnut, the modern, you know, universal almond that is used today. There's no edible pulp on it. But the almond that we have here in the tropics, the tropical almonds, the original almond, they do have a fruit pulp. When that almond falls off the tree, we eat the pulp here and we throw the seeds away. That's generally what we do in these areas. Even the cacao, we get it fresh, and we eat that white flesh, that white pulp off of it. And that's what we enjoy, because it has the serotonin. It, it, it has the, what makes us feel, wow, <laughs> you know, when we eat the cacao. It's in that, that white pulp, 
you know, that, that gives you that runner's high, you know, that same type of energy you get from, say, a fruit like mangosteen. That, you know, mangosteen is known as the happy fruit. So the pulp around that seed, that's what, you know, we really, really, really enjoy. But now it's just called a fruit because we don't eat the seed of the mangosteen. We eat the pulp of the mango. So it's very interesting when you look at, you know, the, uh, you're looking at nuts and seeds and grains and beans from an anthropological perspective. This is anthropology. This is food anthropology that we're talking about. So please, this is a very important life lesson. That's why we decided to take the time to bring this to you because right now we're digesting it into our book, into Sunfire, the Soul of Food, which is going to be published before the end of this year, late fall, early winter, by the end of 2024, this book is going to be available to you. So this part, this is the activation part, activation part of the sun-fired food science. You know, remember, you, you check out my sister's book, Karen Calabrese. Karen Calabrese's book, Soak Your Nuts, will get you a preview of what we're talking about. So all of these are generally pre-soaked before we consume them. And we're talking about sun-fired raw foods, foods that are cooked by the sun that we're not going to cook on a stove unless, you know, you're still partaking of that. If you're going to cook them on a stove or any other means, then please practice conscious cookery. And part of conscious cookery in working with these types of foods, like particularly the beans. Here we have the, the chickpeas or garbanzos and the lentils. Please soak them for 12 hours to remove the enzyme inhibitor so that you can activate the digestive enzymes in these foods that will help you to break them down effectively. If you don't soak your chickpeas and you don't soak your lentils before you cook them, more than likely they're going to gas you up. <laughs> you won't be able to digest them properly. So the, the issue with these types of foods, they, they have both combinations of protein and starch. Protein building foods that builds the body structurally. Starch builds the body by inflammation, blowing it up. Stuff you. That's why we make stuffing <laughs> out of things like grains. But with the beans now, you can sprout them. This is what we're doing. They're in a sprouting state now. We soak them for 12 hours, drain the water off, rinse them, and we leave them to sprout for about four to five days. Within 24 hours after draining the water off, they're germinating. And this is what's going on with these right now. The lentils and the chickpeas are germinating, which means it's being awakened. And the life force, which is locked in the germ, the core, the heartbeat of the seeds, now comes to life. We remove the keys, or we remove the lock, and the key is water, adding that electrical current to it. So that's why all nuts, seeds, grains, and beans have to be soaked for 12 hours. They come to us dry in a dormant state. We need to activate them. The way to activate them, you remove the enzyme inhibitors by soaking them for 12 hours, and those inhibitors end up in the water in which you soak these seeds in. So you want to discard this water. Some of them don't require soaking, like the hemp seed, but you know, we soak them anyway. Hemp seed don't require soaking. The uh, flax seed doesn't require soaking. It's not necessary, but you can especially if you want to activate the omega-3 fatty acid in the flaxseed, you soak them for 12 hours. Get a pound of flaxseed, soak them in a gallon of 
uh, water, spring water, distilled water, whichever one you choose. You even do it in coconut water, but you soak it in your refrigerator. Get a wide mouth jar if you're going to do that. With wide mouth, one gallon jar, one pound of flaxseed in there, soak it, fill it up with water, soak it in your refrigerator for a couple of days, and you see the flaxseed oil coming out of that. So you want to drink that every day, a glass of that, say for a week, two weeks, as long as that gallon is going to last you, lubricates the system and gives you what you're looking for in having this type of energy coming in, the oil, these omega-3s, you know, those friendly fatty acids that are really going to help you to slide things out, you know, and lubricate the systems properly. So they don't have to be soaked. Brazil nuts don't necessarily need to be soaked. They're very high in fat, so they're not going to absorb that much water. Pine nuts as well don't necessarily need to be soaked. Uh, macadamia nuts. And by the way, when we're speaking about nuts and seeds like this, like the pumpkin seed, the, the, the uh, sesame seeds, these here are high in protein, good sources of protein. And when we're talking about the fat, the ones that are higher in fat, like the macadamia, the, the pine nuts, pistach, the, the, the pine nuts, or what they call pignolias, the, the Brazil nuts, and even the hemp seed, which is a good 90% protein. You know, you don't really have to soak them, it's optional. So the other ones generally have a higher concentration of enzyme inhibitors. So read the book, I highly recommend, Enzyme Nutrition by Dr. Howell. So otherwise, stay on the safe side, soak. When you soak flaxseed, just soak them in uh, one cup of flaxseed to one cup of water. And it's going to absorb all. So there's nothing to drain off, there's nothing to rinse because they don't have the enzyme inhibitor that you would find in the other foods. So even like the hemp seed, when you soak them, be ready to use them because they're going to go out quickly because they really didn't have that much enzyme inhibitors in them. So some of these seeds, nuts, can tolerate up to, well, some of them can, can be ready in about four hours, three to four hours, like the sunflower seeds. They, they don't require 12 hours of soaking. So if there's degrees, some require three hours, six hours, eight hours, but they can all tolerate up to 12 hours. So we just ask you not to try to micromanage these. Just let them all soak up to 12 hours. If you're soaking for more than 12 hours, then they may drown. Because once they get soaked, the enzyme inhibitors are removed, then generally what happens, they uh, they get over water and they draw. So they don't need that much water. Drain them after 12 hours. And then when you get in now to the ones that you're gonna sprout, rinse them twice a day, drain and leave them draining for the, for the day, whether it's in a strainer, a colander, a mesh bag or whatever it is. Some of them sprout naturally. Uh, or quickly, I would say. They all sprout naturally. Some sprout very quickly in your refrigerator if you just keep them with a lid on. Look at this here. You see this? This fine grain here. You see it's black. And you see it sprouting. That white shoe, that sprouts going on right there. Let me show you, if I may, these in their original state. Bring the black quinoa. We have black quinoa. Bring some black quinoa to the table. And if we have red quinoa, bring. I think we may have soaked all of what we have. But this is the black quinoa. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Any more? Any in the box? If we got any in the box, black quinoa, just pour it on a little plate, paper, little plate, little dish, something. Let's just share what this looks like before it's been activated. Some fine little black seeds. So we soak them for 12 hours. We, we left them like this with this cover in the refrigerator for six days. 
and this is what has happened. They just sprouted automatically. So when you're consuming grains, I would really advise you to tend towards the finer ones because they have less gluten. They have less starch, less complex carbohydrate. So they break down very, very, very quickly. So this is what happens. So here, we have another one. This is the white quinoa. And this guy was in for about the same amount of days, but it didn't sprout. The white is larger than, yeah. This is what the black looks like. We got the red, that's magic. So the finer the grain, then I would opt or I would advise you to opt to tend more towards the finer grains than the larger grains, like the wheat, the barley, the oats, the spelt, all of these things. You want the finer grains. Amaranth. Here is the red quinoa. This is it. This is how I started off. Soaked it for 12 hours, removed the enzyme inhibitor, they germinated within 24 hours after we drain and rinse them. And in six days, closed in a closed container in my refrigerator. See the condensation from the refrigerator. That's the moisture they're absorbing. So otherwise, the larger grains, we want you to rinse them twice a day. Because now you've woken them up. They were dormant. You have activated them. So here is one, for example, the Kamut. The kamut, we haven't even, yeah, we, we, we haven't even soaked it yet. But this is kamut in its normal state right here, dry state. We just rinsed it because we're getting ready to soak it today. You soak this kamut in water for 12 hours, activate it, it germinates within 24 hours. Rice, oats, wheat, barley, millet, chickpeas, lentils. Less than 10,000 years. Less than 10,000 years. So you consider those food? And we've been around for over a million years, so obviously they're not part of the natural, original, and best food for human consumption. And you know, for you to enjoy those foods, you always must cook them, right? So we're sharing with you how to unlock the energy, and you don't necessarily have to cook them. Otherwise, when the time you cook these things, you expose them to heat, you destroy the digestive enzymes that are in them. So that's a whole nother lesson. You gotta come home to school to get that one. You know, but it's, it's fundamental, it's out there, it's all over the place. So this is what we want. for 12 hours in our dehydrator at 120 degrees. And they fluff up. You see some of them fluffing already. This, is, this, this went through a cycle. Just some of them didn't break. So you have to really be particular about wild rice. And I know many of you, you know, who has done some advanced teaching, you know that these are electrical foods, or you call them electrical foods. But anytime you cook electrical foods, you deactivate the electrical current. So they're no longer electrical because they don't secrete alkalinity. They secrete acid. When you cook an alkaline food, you turn it into acid forming. And the simple thing that you can check out is the, uh, something like say citrus fruits, orange. Orange juice, fresh orange juice, that you make is alkaline. It's acid tasting, but when you put it into your mouth, mix it with your saliva, it's alkaline. It secretes alkalinity. But you take that fresh orange juice and you boil it and concentrate. It's not only acid tasting, but now it's acid forming. So anytime you cook any alkaline forming foods, more than likely you're gonna render them as acidic.
thing with it. Not much complicated carbohydrate or starch in it. So that's why they break fast like this. But the thing is now, when you take them and you cook them, especially all of these other grains, the wheat, the buckwheat, the, 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 uh, the oats, the barley, the kamut, <laughs> you turn them into acid forming. They're already acid forming. To turn them actually into alkaline, you gotta sprout them. It's for them to secrete alkalinity. Of all the grains that are available that we generally enjoy, that are always alkaline, is the, the millet. You can cook the millet and it's still gonna be alkaline. So of all of them, this is the safest of the general category. But the best is the ones that are much finer, the quinoa, that will sprout and turn into simple carbohydrate much faster than the other ones that are high in gluten. So you end up with celiac and some of these other conditions. So the grains, you have to be careful. I mean, I'm gonna stop short of telling you don't eat them anymore. Because that's your, that's, your, your, that's your choice. But they need to be turned into simple sugar. And if you don't digest them, they will not for sugar. A whole bunch of other situations that these foods would generate. You know, so they're, they're definitely the culprit. They don't talk about eating starch anymore. They just tell you, instead of starch on the My Plate new food guideline, they just said eat 50% protein. These are your protein, seeds and nuts sunflower seed, sesame seed, the black one and the white one, cashew seed, hemp seed, pumpkin seed, nuts, almonds, walnuts, hazelnuts, pecans, pistachio. So, but then now, they say 50% protein and grains. They don't say starch anymore, grains. Otherwise, they will tell you starch, and the starch not only includes the grains, but it includes definitely the beans. But they only said grains. So that's the preferred. Based on the US government food and nutrition guideline, and other complex carbohydrate group that is not even mentioned so boldly in the guideline, the roots, <laughs> the roots, potato, Yams, those are starch, those are complex carbohydrates, those are complicated food too. So they highly recommend that you stick with the grains. But they don't reach up to the higher heights because they still have you use your grains to make pasta, to make bread. You're cooking them. For you to turn those into sugar, it's a tough job. So we're sprouting them, we're processing them, we're taking, making crackers, we're making breads, we're making biscuits, all of these things, pizza crust, but in a very scientific way based on enzyme nutrition theory. So our nuts, soak them for 12 hours, they're ready to go. Sesame seed, cashews, soak them for 12 hours, they're ready to go as well. Some of them, you might want to activate them, sprout it. So if you like here, the, the pumpkin seed. We don't have it here, but we have it in a pumpkin seed butter. But when it says sprout it, it means that those pumpkin seed were first soaked before they were turned into a butter, as opposed to, you know, your almond butter or something, the commercial ones. Because you can get these. These are available, but it's a premium. Yeah, because they have to soak them, sprout them, dehydrate them, then they turn them into a butter, pumpkin seed butter. High in zinc, really helps, protects the male reproductive organ, the prostate, because that's the main mineral of the scar. We're supposed to use it to procreate. <laughs> But anytime you ejaculate, 
a lot of wow <laughs> yeah a lot of it is coming out a lot of it is coming out so you want to replenish it with the pumpkin seed zinc you don't want to be throwing your zinc away well thanks to safe sex you're not only throwing your sink away you're throwing your life away the whole new safe sex concept where you strap up with, 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 with a uh, what they call those things? <laughs> I don't know, back in the days, we call them scumbags. So you jerk your life, whether you do it by yourself or your partner help you, and squeeze it into a scumbag and flush it down the toilet bowl. Save sex. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, you know, 20 years now, my safe sex is no sex. So, but it's another page. All of these kind of lessons is what we have here to share with you. Pistachio butter, yes, organic, raw, activated, pre-soaked, and stone ground. Not like the other stuff, but you're going to be like, whoa, $20, damn, man. <laughs> With a little bottle of nut butter. You want to buy a big bu bucket of peanut butter for $2. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. You're going to reap as you sow. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the food in your life, but the life in your food that nourish. You know, you're not saving anything by trying to live in a cheap body or an inexpensive body. You know, go with what you can afford. But ultimately, if you want to really be on the safe side, you don't necessarily have to spend the, the money to live in an expensive body. Just live in a body that eats in moderation. The less you eat, the longer you're going to live. So that volume is probably more dangerous than the bad quality. <laughs> it's the volume. Because you could have great, good, exciting foods like this, and you eat them in high volumes and the body cannot process it, you're really no better off. So be mindful. Be aware of this whole concept of enzyme nutrition, soaking your seeds, nuts, grains, and beans before you consume them. You can soak those chickpeas, soak those lentils. These are, of all the peas, all the beans, these are the two that you're relatively safe with. They don't make oil from them. Check that out, as opposed to soybeans. You know how much oil they get out of soybean? The body can't break it down. The body cannot process the protein. The 80% of protein that is in soybean, you have a tough time. Because soybean mm -hmm. itself are locked with enzyme inhibitors that block your body and prevent it from secreting the trypsin, which is a digestive enzyme that you would produce that you need to digest the protein that is based in soybean. So soybean is un undigestible. So you don't see anybody making a soybean stew or a soybean chili. Not even the fresh edamame. But in the Orient, where soybean has been used for years, centuries, thousands of years, they've learned this long time ago. So they soak them they sprout, they germinate them, they sprout them, and then they culture them. They make them ferment. Yes. <laughs> they make them ferment. Like miso, tempeh, because now they're pre-digested. And even the tofu it used to be soybean curd. Now they ain't curdling it no more. <laughs> so they're not pre-digested. So they're not breaking down. So right now, we consider soybean the new pork on the block. Soybean, you don't need them, okay? They're not gonna do anything for you on that level, but I don't know, it's like a catch-22, because the ones that are activated in these... Uh, so from the blessings of our heart to your mouth to your palate so from heart to mouth 
We're not coming from the soil. We're coming from our heart. We love you, family. So eat, drink, and be merry because you don't have to be sick. If your food don't bring you merriment, reel and come again. Back up. <laughs> Back up. If your food makes you sick, I don't know. I think you're living in the wrong universe. So at 77, here I am. Here I am. I'm not sick. My brain is clicking and it's ticking. <laughs> it's not shrinking like a prune. No pre-Alzheimer here. 2020 vision. And my energy is unbound. Looking forward to sharing with you here at the Sunfire Culinary Institute. Welcome home. Welcome to life. Welcome to yourself. We are your source. Blessings and much love to you. Life lesson number one. Peace. Okay.